that's what took place here. Now let me just show you a couple of things here, and I want to see what you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, okay, so to Tracy's question, which is a good question, um, why don't you check with a neighbor? I'm just, let's take a couple minutes, and let's see what you know to see what scholars and other participants, remember everybody's not a scholar, even though they may make contributions, but what, what scholars and others were at the ASCAC conference, and what scholars and others were at the Nile Valley conference. Because both of these efforts took off in different but similar directions. So just, just kind of confer with a neighbor uh, or just kind of jot down some notes to see, to see what you know. Take another minute. So, uh, all right, so let, let's come together here. And the main, the main question, too, is uh, not only who passed through, but who were really the organizers of either conference, because to me that's even more important. Okay, so, uh, so before you, actually, you know what, I'm going to give you any clues. Okay, what did you all come up with in terms of, well, let's start with this, with the, ASC, with, with the conference that launched ASCAC. Uh, and they just had, well, you know, I tell you that. But the conference that, that launched ASCAC, who were Brother Katabazi mentioned some people that he saw there. So who were participants? Who were organizers? Just whatever. Yeah. There's a name I didn't hear, and I'm curious about. Len's name. Jeffries. Len Jeffries was he yeah. there? Oh yeah, we did say Jeffries. Yeah. Yeah. Jeffries was Small. here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Len Jeffries out of what yeah. what what center? Remember, I mentioned the main centers, cities. New York. Okay, New York. So you got, you have uh, New York, Chicago. Chicago. No, he's, he's from New York, Lynn Jeffries. But you got New York. Oh, you listen. I'm sorry. Okay, so you got New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Atlanta. and Los Angeles. These are the main centers. Okay, so uh, Lynn Jeffries, correct? <coughs> they call him Dr. J. Who else? Yes, anybody, just call out. Yeah. Uh, just over to Chicago, Great Noble. Uh, Wade Nobles, yes. Over the Shaka, no. Okay. Remember Ani? I don't know if she was there in the beginning, but she certainly became a part of this effort. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I knew I was Not at all. As a matter of fact, in 1984, I just came out of my coma. I just <laughs> recovered from historical amnesia. This is the year I woke up. Okay. And, and then I moved to Morgan State in July of that year. Okay. I, I was oblivious to this until 86, I think, 87. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, but, but her name escapes me. The sister who was very instrumental in organizing. Uh, um, Dr. Um, the female. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's her No, the one. Her, her, her son came here with the pictures and stuff uh, just recently. Diana uh, oh, Clark, Clark, Sister Clark. No, I'm thinking of no. somebody else. Okay. Sister Clark was there. 
she, no. she, she, she was she, very instrumental. She, she, she was there. She was okay. instrumental in the one that we did here at Laney College. Okay. In the conference? Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the one, yeah, the, 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 the Laney conference that came about later. Yeah. But, but, but she did attend. She did attend. Who else would be a part of this? Diana Clark. Diana Clark. Diana Clark. Who else? Okay, well, uh, let's move on. What about the Nile Valley Conference? That's too hot in there. Okay. Uh, okay. Dr. Dr. Charles French. Okay, Dr. Fitz, correct. Oh, yeah. All right, Dr. Did Charles Fitz. Did Dr. Fitz go there, too? What center? Uh, uh, what that's center? the, uh, that was out of the Nile. So, uh, what, what, what city or center? Um, he would be out of uh, New York. No? Uh, no. Uh, which one? For this one? You say Ascac, you say Nile Valley, uh, you're both correct. Yeah, <laughs> you're founding member. Founding member of Ascac, but also Asa being who he was, he didn't segregate himself, so he was in both. Well, yes. Did Milana Karenga go to the Nile Valley Conference as well? Nope. If you had mentioned him with this, it would have been correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, I assumed that he was there because it was in L.A. But I was wondering, because you said that this creation of the Nile Valley Conference was a associated with a, a rift, and then attendance at one or the other is very uh, instructive. Yeah, very much so. We'll cover the details. You're right. Yes, sir. I, I, I think it, it may be uh, probably point out that uh, uh, in L.A., uh, Dr. Karanga was uh, was the, and his group were the one that organized and, and sponsored that event at the at the at the campus that it happened at. Mm -hmm. They were the hosting uh, uh, group and did an excellent job. So so, so, so his organization is that was the, the us organization. Uh, well, he was part of the Kauai the Ada. Yeah. Look how we the communities. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the official sponsor? But no, this one was, um, I can't think of it right now. It seemed like it was, it was paying some. Africa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, okay. I can't remember. You're right, he was a host for the right. conference. <laughs> and uh, now, now Valley, anybody else? We have Dr. Charles Fitch out of Atlanta. Anybody else? Okay, all right, so now I have an idea of what you know. Okay, so. The, the split, yeah. And see, okay, so there was another scholar there. Um, <clears throat> uh, I believe Naeem Akbar was there. Uh, which one? At the, the Nile Valley. The Nile Valley. Uh, I don't know that he was there at that conference. He was instrumental early on, to say the least. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure if he was there in 84. But he did start okay. participating early. Dr. Richard King, uh, was he at that one? He was at the, uh, Dr. Valley. King was at the Nile Valley Conference. Yeah, I, I think Akbar, I don't know if he was here, but not, I, I, Akbar was associated with ASCAC. But Dr. Richard King, out of what yeah. area, what center? Okay, then he was in San Francisco. Now, cause now he's in L.A. Yeah. He's based in L.A. In now. LA. Yeah. And who else? What about Malefia Sanjay? I, I would think he'd be at ASCAC. So now you're thinking about the previous one? <laughs> what do you all think? Malifia Sante? I think you'll be at the first one. Yeah, okay, Malifia, yes. Yeah. That's okay. Okay, let, let's move on and see. Uh, okay, so what do you know? All right, so I was s some of these people you know. This is the, uh, this is some. I didn't try to put everybody in there because uh, it would take time to, an organization of slides and time to verify. But uh, anyway, so just kind of, uh, so it's not to slight anybody, but these are some of the main people. So who is this? Yeah, Dr. Clark. Oh, this is Dr. Clark. Uh, this is Dr. Dr. Yosef Ben Jokanan, we call him Dr. Ben affectionately. And even though he's called Dr. Clark, um, you know, his, he didn't have a lot of formal education, but not many scholars could even hold his books. Yeah. Who, who is this? And, and, and these two, uh, out of what center? Uh, what center? New York. New York. Clark Bend, New York. This is 
Is that Dr. Carruthers? I don't know. That's my question. Oh, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, Dr. Jacob okay, okay, good. Okay, Dr. Jacob Carruthers out of what area? Chicago. Chicago. Out of Chicago. And uh, yes, absolutely. Now it's called, they have uh, um, the Northeastern, drawing a big it's blank, but now it's called the Inner City Studies. The Inner City yeah. Studies. Now they change it to the J uh, Jacob, uh, Carruthers Center. Jacob H. H. Carruthers Center. Oh, yes. Good. Center for Inner City Studies. They changed it in his honor. This is his cousin. Oh, wow. Dr. Asa Hilliard, uh, he was here in San Francisco for a while, yeah. and, I, and, uh, and out of what center? Atlanta. Atlanta, he moved to Atlanta, so these are all ancestors. Dr. Hilliard uh, has sorry. a connection. Dr. Ben's still alive. Dr. Ben's among us, but the other three are ancestors, yes. Yeah, I was going to say that Dr. Hilliard has a connection with, uh, with my wife, I think his, uh, his wife, it's my wife's cousin, and I had a chance to meet him before I knew he was a great scholar. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that we found oh, okay. mm -hmm. excellent. And this is Tony Browder. Nope. Mm -hmm. French. Um, no, he's out. Gary Crew is out of Chicago. Yeah. He's um, been teaching at, at the. Uh, uh, the Jacob Carruthers Center for quite some some time. Uh, he, he's a he's a real historian. This is Dr. Anderson Thompson. They call him Andy affectionately. And Andy's been there from the beginning, and he continues to be in the trenches right now. Uh, he was here. In uh, fact, in fact, um, fact no, it wasn't. Uh, he he spoke at ACAL. This must have been about three years ago, two two and a half years ago. He and I were presenting at ACAL and here in West Oakland. Mm -hmm. He was invited in by uh, the Western region of Ascot. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is Jeffrey. Luna Jeffries. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Luna Jeffries, what center? New York. New York. Uh, New York still active. And this is? This um, is? What center is um, Anderson Thompson? Chicago. Chicago. Anderson City Studies. It used to be called a Center for Inner City Studies, but since uh, Brother Carruthers passed away, now it's called the Jacob H. Carruthers uh, Center. And what center is Leonard Jeffries from? New York. New York. Yeah, City College of New York. And who would this be? Mm -hmm. this, this is his wife? Yeah. What's her uh, name? Rosalind. Okay, Dr. Rosalind Jeffries, mm -hmm. who focuses a lot on African art and yeah. spirituality and rituals. Yes. Personal comment? Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Jeffries is my first uh, boss in higher education. I, I taught in the New York York Studies Department. No, I think San Jose. San Jose, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. And this is back in the uh, uh, 70s. 70s. Okay. And, uh, we, we kind of began friends. Okay. <laughs> and also, browsing. We used to go to their home. Uh, uh, Rossin is the person who discovered that one of my sons was an artist and was destined to be an artist. And he was only uh, about five at the time, sitting on the floor, uh, drawing mm -hmm. and using crayons. And she said, I must have that. <laughs> She's an artist. <laughs> I must have that. That is just brilliant. <laughs> uh, so we discovered his, his main talent. Yeah, like mm -hmm. And this is? Uh, is no, that's the uh, attorney from Compton that was here. Legrand Clay. Yeah. 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 Clay. Yeah. 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 In fact, uh, yeah, so we had Legrand come in, but Legrand come in just about a year or so ago with the Save Nubia project. He was the city attorney for Compton. He retired uh, a few years ago. And. Um, so Brother Clegg, I was just, so when I would go to LA, I would stay at his at his place. Mm -hmm. And so Brother Clegg was there; he's still active. And this sister here. Mommy. <laughs> 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 I'm glad to rub shoulders with her. That would be great. <laughs> uh, she's been active and remains active in the Western region of yeah. Ascot. They have different regions. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is uh, uh, oh, Portland. Yes, she's in a, she's in the Seattle area. Sister Joy Hardeman. Uh, yes, Joy Hardeman. So she's in uh, Seattle, Tacoma area. They had a conference that they invited me up to. It's about three years ago now. And this here would be. No, 
she was she was she was the she was the one teaching most of them, not all, but most of them met do nature. Because even when uh, Karinga wrote to Lucia, he didn't know anything about Medunetra. Right. So there was some tension within Ashkak about who knew Medunetra and who was clear about the <laughs> research in the field and who wasn't. So finally people started submitting their work to her to translate and so forth. Yeah. This is Sister uh, Riketty Amin yeah. Jones. Yeah. In fact, uh, her name used to be Riketty Wimby. Right, 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 yeah. She was, she was also at the L.A. ASCAT. Yes. Very, very sweet, uh, common, uh, a small sister. And we was all, we was all full of when she was talking about it. She was writing a book on the main new nature. Yeah. So, so with Katie Armand Jones, she was a Ph.D. student at the University of Chicago. But like uh, UC Berkeley, you may enter into a program as a, to study Egyptology, but you're not gonna make it out alive. Mm, there's wow. nobody, there's no African has made it out of either program. Wow. Not yeah. one. No, wow. yeah, absolutely. Out, know, of the, the, out of the Egyptology program at UC Berkeley or places like uh, University of Chicago, it's a bastion of white supremacy. Mm. And you can get in, but you would not get out alive. I have a student, very <laughs> sharp, uh, she came crawling back to me a few weeks ago, and, and she's very sharp and focused, but she's, she's changed her major four times in a year and a half. Wow. Egyptology, you recognize that wasn't going to happen. You have these large lecture halls, and you got some outrageous nonsense being, uh, being uh, discussed and mentioned and spewed out, and the students gobbled it up, and you can raise a question if you want, but you will face the ire of everybody in that room. Mm. So you can only you can only attempt to be successful if you have community support, and even then, because I was talking to Brother uh, Carruthers about this process when I was considering going into Egyptology, I asked uh, Carruthers, I asked Ben, I asked a few people, Carruthers said, Brother, it ain't worth it. Because he said, if they like you, if, if you've done all the work at the master's level, if they like you, it's still going to take at least 10 years. And so he was telling me at the time that Sister Ricchetti was a naive to think that uh, that she can get through that program without doing certain things. And sure enough, a couple years later, she was out. I don't know if that was because she got married and had to take care of her daughter. That might have had something to do with it. But the other part, so she never finished. That's the first time I understood how much of a closed operation that really was in uh, in Egyptology. But anyway, Sister Ricchetti, she's not really active anymore, and you, you know who that is. Oh, yeah, Dr. Mm -hmm. okay, Dr. Dr. Noble. Mm -hmm. yes. Isn't she associated with, with uh, something called the Institute for Community Studies? That was in Chicago. Uh, 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 um, I don't know if it's still active, but they charge for courses. Oh, you mean now, currently? Yeah, it's yeah. something like a thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, Sister Ricchetti was uh, the one teaching Medunet, right. so uh, out of New York. So when I moved back here from Europe in 92, we had Sister Ricchetti come from New York to teach a class in Medunet, because at the time, she was still associated with the University of Chicago, and you have to be gifted in, in linguistics and dedicated. But uh, she didn't make it out of there, so she was out, off the scene for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Most people didn't even know who Ricchetti, at that time, Ricchetti Wimby was. Right. She changed her name to Ricchetti Amin, Ricchetti Amin Jones. And so she's uh, reemerged, and she is teaching um, um, the, the metal natural classes and yeah, and some other stuff. Yeah, they 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 got metal nature, and now they're teaching classes if you can speak metal nature. Right. Impossible. Yeah, just just a calendar. Right she, 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 as a matter of fact, uh, that's what allowed her to emerge early. Is the uh, they call it the committed calendar. Her and Frederick Reese put out the committed calendar back in 1990 or somewhere around there. So that's the Kenny uh, brother, as you know, Wade Nobles was there at the first conference. And he's been still loosely associated with ASCAC. You know he's here in Oakland. And um, who would this be? Malefia Sante. Malefia Sante. What area is he from? Temple. Temple. What city? Philly. In Philadelphia. So. Uh, What's his first name? Malefia Sante. 
And so he was active. Uh, he, he was there in the beginning, but his, his participation is uh, not there now. And so there's no, so Philadelphia could not be considered a center, even though he participated. And then finally, Milana Karinga. So Karinga was there for the first uh, three, the first four ASCAC conferences before his participation ended as well. And so uh, he's not active. And so, okay, so this group here, their position was that the conference should be four Africans by Africans, of Africans, and only Africans. So that was their position, more of a nationalist position. That we don't need any white scholars, white presenters, or white experts. So they had the conference in LA, and that launched the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilizations, or ASCAC. So that was the, the group that uh, took the line that uh, we need to keep this only us. That was their position. So 84, ASCAC. critical year. And Excuse me, um, I just wanted to say something um, about Father Abe Sekulu real mm -hmm. quick. Um, just affectionately, I remember I was doing a research paper when I was in school back in the 80s, and he made sure that I had some correct um, research information um, regarding the uh, ancient education and school system systems. So I just wanted to look him up on the mm -hmm. yeah. All right. <laughs> Appreciate it. Matter of fact, we had a, when he passed in 07, we had a major event at the Milano Center in his honor. And uh, so, uh, yes. he had Organized. a major influence. By Organized Spirit, was that? Yes. yes. But and presented there. Yes. Led by Brother Dr. <laughs> Ray Davis. Mm -hmm. That was all it was wonderful. It was, it was a committee. Yeah. Yeah, it was a committee. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Okay, so they had their conference uh, this month. They had the 30th <laughs> annual yeah, conference at Howard University. Oh, so that's kind of still. So every year they have, but the third weekend in March they have their annual conference. Yes. Is it still um, all uh, uh, for people of African descent? For the most part. Because you know that um, Europeans dominate um, African studies pretty much anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, so I can see why that the, the need to have, hold something specifically for scholars of African descent would be sound. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you go to, you think you go into a conference mm -hmm. and all, all of the Africanists are Europeans. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had that that happened. I remember when I was living in Los Angeles and um, this, uh, I heard the announcement that um, um, Ivan Ben Sertima was going to be at USC lecturing. And I, I, I went there to try to get in. And um, uh, they said, sorry, you know, they stopped me at the door and said, uh, all, all seats are taken. And uh, I just peeked in the door, it was all white, white uh, professors and scholars that were in there. And, you know, no, no black people were in there to got a chance to get in there and hear me speak. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so you said, I'm still um, a little confused about this, the split, because the ASCAC happened in February, but the Nile Valley Conference didn't happen until September of the same year. So so you're saying the Nile Valley Conference was the, the one where that was more, quote unquote, um, allowed more people to attend mm -hmm. of different types. More participation by other contributors. Okay. Yeah, that's the mm -hmm. Nile Valley. In fact, uh, when ASCAC was early and new and young, it was uh, more of a scholarly organization, real scholars. Mm -hmm. So they published the proceedings from the first two ASCAC conferences. The first one was in LA in 1984, and the second one was where? Where was the second annual conference? What? Okay. <laughs> it was one of the centers. Uh, uh, Oakland was in 1990, so that was the seventh, seventh conference. But in uh, 1985, the, uh, the conference was in Chicago. So this is it here, Kemet in the African World View. So you have some of the papers published and edited by Milana Karinga and Jacob Carruthers. So uh, this was the first two, the first two conferences in LA and Chicago. And then ASCAC grew beyond the borders. And so when ASCAC was founded, 
the scholars had no idea. So what they had had uh, planned on doing is creating a community of scholars. That's all they wanted to do, is to come together and from these different centers and work on a common project to rescue and reconstruct classical African civilizations. But they had no idea that the public was not going to allow them to just keep it among themselves as scholars. So people came by the hundreds and thousands and said, look, how do we participate? So now you have these people in a position to say, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> so in those first years, ASCAC was trying to figure out how do we incorporate this enthusiasm. So that's when they had to create some structure. They created structure, and then there were different commissions set up. Uh, they have a research commission, spirituality commission. They have, they have a handful of commissions, and they have different regions. Like this is the western region. They have the Midwestern region. They have different regions because people around the country wanted to participate. So then you have the proliferation of study groups all over the country mm -hmm. centered around uh, ASCAC and the ASCAC writers, ASCAC lecturers, ASCAC scholars. And eventually, this enthusiasm spilled over to the African continent because being led by the great Dr. Ben, the pioneer, so they had the first uh, annual... Uh, conference in Aswan, in Kemet. This was in 1987. So it was the fourth conference. And they had somewhere between 800 and 1,000 people who went to Kemet. And so all these these, these folks, they went. They, they went to this, and it was uh, people from all over the U.S. and Canada and places like England and the Caribbean. I've met many people around the world who was at that first conference in 1987. So the papers presented at that conference are captured right here in Reconstructing Committed Culture, Papers, Perspectives, and Projects, edited by Milana Karinga. So this was the 87 um, uh, conference in Aswan, Egypt, or Aswan, Kemet. Yeah, brother. This is the footnote, brother Kenneth. made me uh, think of something. We talk about all these white folks that were sitting there in that, that room when they, when they peeped in the door. At Howard University, I graduated in 1972, and I never forgot the first person that got a PhD in African American studies was a European. I never forgot. We was all just strong, man. We were just. No they're strong, no doubt. Right now, they well, just like I was saying last week, that you know the, the first and the most influential histories of Africa have all been published by those that don't look like us. Mm -hmm. so you got the Cambridge History of Africa, the Oxford History of Africa, mm -hmm. and so that's why DF challenged this white supremacist project. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and better fact, they're the only people in the world who write a world history. There's nobody else that does that. Not that they can't. They just don't think in those terms. Mm -hmm. They're the only people on the globe that write a world history. They don't just tell us about every the whole world. And w when I'm teaching a class, they we know everything. yeah, they supposedly mm -hmm. they know everything. It's about control, right. uh, mm -hmm. as well. It's about controlling right. not only the people in the world, but what they learn about the world. And so they've colonized people. And they've colonized the information as well. And one of the things that's absolutely crucial and and critical is is to look at this whole project. You know, it's, it's important because it's uh, it's always about misrepresentation, and it continues to be a huge huge problem. So, um, you know, teaching the world. Oh, I was going to say, before I teach any class, if I'm going to use a textbook, then I always critique the textbook. And what gives this person the ability to write a world textbook when their only experience is, is uh, doing research on Europe? It usually is research on Europe only within a certain time period and a certain location in Europe. So how does that qualify them to write a world history textbook? But that's generally what happens. It's skewed. To, uh, to try to highlight the importance of Europe. That's typically what happens. Okay, so um, uh, also Jacob Carruthers' essays in Ancient Egyptian Studies. He's given uh, conceptual frameworks of how we should look at the work and the research. So this is when ASCAC, and in the early years, we're dealing with scholars. This is why they published proceedings and other. And uh, by the way, these are the last publications that ASCAC has really put out regarding the proceedings and so forth. Because, like I said, the scholars were active in the early days. Now, what happened in 1887, it was a split. It was a, it was a split within ASCAC in 87 because uh, Dr. Ben was the only one really leading tours. And, uh, and when they went, you know, Karinga had his own idea about what he should do in the temples. And Ben said, no, we're not going to do it that way. So he had a splinter group at it within the conference. So when they came back in 1988, they had 
the annual conference in Baltimore, and I was there, and it was very contentious. And the great Dr. Clark uh, said that, uh, you know what, you all are disrespectful, and I don't rubber stamp, uh, I don't rubber stamp anybody else's ideas. You will respect it, the eldership, the position of eldership as has always been done in traditional African culture. So it's not about window dressing. So he busted him out publicly. And so did Dr. Ben. Dr. Ben stood up and said this is disrespectful because they didn't have him on the schedule. They had him to just give a token, how's everybody, I'm here. <laughs> oh, no. So Sister Rosalind Jeffries is always very gracious. She said, look, to help resolve this problem and this conflict, I'm going to give up my time to the great elder. I'm going to let him take my time because Ben said I'm not going to be disrespected. So he presented. So anyway, but that was... Um, but by that time, and uh, matter of fact, uh, Asante and Karinga were still involved at that time, but things began to change after that. So anyway, that's ASCAC. This is the conference uh, just a couple of weeks ago at, it, at Howard. Who's involved with modern ASCAC? Uh, modern ASCAC? Are still? all of the scholars still involved? No. Uh, Brother Andy Thompson, Lynn Jeffries, Rosalyn Jeffries, Brother LeGuan Clegg still involved, Joy Hardiman. Um, Greg Carr is vice president. He's at Howard. Mario Beatty is now the new president because Nzinga passed away uh, yeah, a couple years ago. And uh, who else you might know? Uh, those might be, those are the only ones I can think of offhand that you would possibly, that would ring a bell. Others might come through to present, but these are people that have offices. Did you attend that thing at Howard? I didn't, uh, I, I, um, but I did attend the ASCAC conference in Howard in 2011. And is there a study group in the Bay Area? Not now, because, uh, in fact, you all know Brother Naeem. Mm -hmm. Naeem was the Western Region President of ASCAC mm -hmm. right. until he uh, asked me a question one day. <laughs> I thought he, I, I don't know what, I, I didn't know why he asked me the question. He asked me this in 2008, because they went to, ASCAC went to Kemet in 2007. So he learned some things, he learned, he, he met the people that I know in Kim and he came back and said, brother, how come you're not working with ASCAP? I thought he was just playing, just to open up a conversation. <laughs> but then he didn't say anything else. I said, what do you mean? He said, why are you not working with ASCAP? I said, are you serious? He, I said, you serious? So I had to tell him the, the background and the history. I said, brother, I don't work with people who are disrespectful. You respect me just like you would any other scholar. So, and I know it's on tape, but it's the facts. The previous president was very negative, that drove away a lot of people, and just very disrespectful. She was on the war path, as a matter of fact. Okay. Now, let me tell you what, just so, it's, uh, so it is on tape, but let me just give, because I, I trust you all, but even if I didn't, which I do, I'm gonna tell you this anyway, because you need to know, but you know I do trust you, but, but nevertheless, I say this to the public audience, if somebody asked the question, if they were sincere about it, but when the ASCAC conference took place here in Oakland in 1990, um, I was in Europe. I was traveling, doing research in 11 countries in Europe. I wasn't even in the country. I had been in, I'd been on the East Coast from 8, 1984, and I was in Europe in, in 89 and 90. So that conference that was organized by ASCAC, my father was the official videographer for the conference. So he contracted with ASCAC to shoot the, the conference. But the president had some unique ideas about how agreements should go. So they agreed that uh, I think he would make, I forgot the, the amount, either two or three copies of everything. Everything. All of the presentations, the workshops. But the president, she had a very different idea. Her idea was that I want not only those, but I want all the, but I want the masters. So I was like, who does that? There's no photographer that would give you a master. Now, that's not going to happen. Or a videographer. In the contract, you agree. So this was a big issue. And uh, Sister Diamond Clark had to actually, had to negotiate this. So my father took the high road, and I think he did give the masters. Okay, this is in 1990. So my father thought all this was done. Now, keep in mind, I'm overseas. I don't know anything about any of this. And when I came back from overseas, I, I'm on the East Coast. I'm still on the East Coast until another until the end of '91. So when you all saw me here at ASCAC, that was just to come. I mean, here at excuse me at Wose, 
they're just here to come for a few weeks. But then I found out that I, when I presented at uh, the ASCAC National Conference in Newark, uh, this is the first time people had saw my work because I just came from all the, uh, all, the, uh, all the institutes, museums, and libraries throughout Europe, the pyramid sites, temple sites, tomb sites, and ancient residential sites in Kemet. So I was presenting that in Newark. And then there were some other scholars here in uh, California. So Zinger was saying, that, wow, I heard great things about your presentation. We're going to form not only a, a, a West Coast contingent, but a California contingent. That's going to be at the top of Aztec. Fine. So that was in 92. Next thing I know, uh, this, this, this person took the low road and said that, that so she creates some war, which I didn't even know about, based on what? She said that because she had some conflict years ago about this video, Thing that she said, the apple don't fall far from the tree. Mm. Now, oh, wow. so how do I know that? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Here, here's, how I, here, here's how I know that because everywhere I went, people were stunned. I said, brother, this is, I've never seen this kind of research before. You've been to all these places. This kind of pioneer work is phenomenal. But why is this lady off talking like that in every place? So even Obinga tried to, uh, uh, even even Obinga knew this was absolutely insane. So he would say, oh, I am Pim, the doctor, I understand. You know, but nevertheless, so after 92, I said, I don't deal with Mickey Mouse activity. Uh, uh, my work is independent and has nothing to do with anybody else uh, in these circles. You know, I'm not their mentee. I've always shown them respect because when I came back, I contacted everybody mm. and said, look, I'm fresh. I don't have any obligations. What can I do to come to your center, your city, your place and work? And the response across the board was completely <laughs> the same. The response was not to respond. Yeah, so that was, that was the response, not to respond. So then I find out this lady's on the war path. So this, is, this is low road, is petty. So I was away for, from 1992 to 2008. The only time I presented is when, and I didn't, it didn't matter to me at all. It really didn't. But... When they had local conferences here in Oakland, the local people, Naeem and others, not just him, but they would insist that you're not going to have a conference on classical Africa not include Professor Bingham. That's not going to happen. Right. So they would always take the high road. The local people would invite me, but not a national. So that's what I, I said. You, how do you not? How do you work closely with folks and not know that? He didn't know. I said, okay. Well, here's the issue. So I start pointing out issues of why a lot of people who are who are legitimate scholars can't work in that arena. So he's, he's seen that on his own. So there's no western region that's active now because I think you mentioned was a study group. doesn't exist because Naeem and Diane were, were like the last ones and then they have an LA group too. LeGron, Clegg and others. But uh, Is there, a, is there a, a, a possibility for a sort of cola nut sit down? No, 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 because there's nothing going on. My, my, my whole point was to show you these she's books. Gone. Yeah, she's, she's gone dead. now. Uh, well, but I mean, just for everybody. No, 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 not at all, not at all. Because everybody's never going to have the same goal. It's a waste of time to, to try to mend something. It doesn't matter. I mean, if brother hadn't approached me, he, why didn't he know? Because I, why am I going to spend time talking? It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. These books that you see, uh, uh, Kemet in the African Worldview and so forth, I just said this is the last scholarly work in ASCAP. Mm -hmm. There's no scholarship in what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You might have some scholars involved, but I mean scholarship from, so I've moved in a different directions, no big deal, because the work is always going to get done. There's just no reason to go and have differences, so people can have conferences, while others, that's why I think Sister Crystal, that's why I wrote my book, by the way, and before I wrote my book, there was already this craziness, but moving beyond the limitations of the lecture model, that's why I yes. called it a lecture model, you have people literally running around the country, crisscrossing the country, with no plan, no program, making tons of money. $4,000 a cent. Minimum. Minimum. Uh, 2500 yeah, uh, 25, 3500 some, except, uh, brag about 7000 Asa, uh, whose wife was his representative when it came to uh, setting up uh, his lectures, and who was very, very flexible at his insistence uh, so that there would be no obstacle to his being able to interact with students. 
very much so. It, it, there's a lot of issues. Provided he respected the person who was doing the arranging of the campus. Okay. But it's a lot of issues. There's a lot of issues as to why it hasn't moved forward. But, but no big deal. You know, every, every organization has its usefulness. And you know, it moves on. So no, no, there's, Brother, a lot, you, there's a lot more work that continues to be done. Would yes. you mind saying anything if, if you if you wish to about uh, the degree to which there is now competition over the turf, particularly with respect to Kemet, among some scholars who I'll say scholars, uh, who've sort of made it their business uh, to uh, be the preeminent voice in certain areas. I don't want to call names, but um, I don't really know. Other than the fact that I know that ASCAC doesn't invite certain certain people, and they haven't been involved for years and years. Okay. So that's been an ongoing right. issue. Um, I will go when I will have something to present. There's no issue uh, that I have. I mean, I, I move forward. But the last time I presented the national conference, when I was I took by the name, I'll go. But it was in 2011, they had it at, uh, at Howard. But it's not just about speaking all the time. It's about what you're going to do. But mm -hmm. Just to go and speak, that's not really what I'm concerned about. The work that Dr. Van Sertel was doing with his African Journal, has there been kind of a void? Because that was a vehicle for students and scholars to present papers. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and in fact, that's what we want to get to right now. And by the way, before I forget to pass these out, Last week we were dealing with Obinga and Diop. I don't know, some of you were taking notes, so let me show you some other books in French. That um, So this is uh, Sheikh Anta Diop, New Researches on Ancient Egyptian and Modern Black African Languages. And this one, let's see, this is, uh, this is a, um, a journal. This is a journal in honor of Diop. So most times you can only get these in Paris or some place like that. Here's a uh, science and African civilizations that pay homage to Sheikh Anta Diop. And again, most of it's in French, so it's not easy to get. Here is uh, here's one of Obinga's works, uh, Readings in Pre-Colonial Central Africa, Text and Documents, Obinga's work. Here is uh, Obinga as well, uh, African University, uh, an Academy of African, of the African Union, so there's another one here, and um, let's see, Brother Kikta had mentioned most of the books, or many of the books, but here's another one by John Jackson, Ages of Gold and Silver. Mm -hmm. We mentioned mm -hmm. some of his other works last week, uh, like Man, God, and Civilization, and other classics, but I don't know if you're aware of this one. And then uh, when Diop passed away, Ben Sertima had published, actually, he, he yeah, published uh, this uh, great African thinker, mm -hmm. Sheikh mm -hmm. Anta Diop. So let's move forward. So uh, uh, Egypt, the next group. Egypt Revisited. Is that Egypt Which Revisited we, is... Frank, or Egypt Revisited has uh, Van Sertima's journal. No. That's no, one issue. Yeah, that's, African journal. That's, 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 that's African journal. Which was a series. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a journal of African civilizations. Right. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so let's... So let's uh, so these individuals were prominent individuals at the Nile Valley Conference in Atlanta, September of 1984. So uh, who was this? Richard King. Uh, Richard King. Okay, now he's in L.A. No. This is... Um, Did he pass? No, no. no, no it, 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 was a, it was a bad report that he passed. He had some health issues, but he didn't pass. That was about a year ago. So then people had to email back and said his, the reports of his death are greatly exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> this is Richard King. This is uh, that's uh, no good no, 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 at the conference. Same person, LeGuard Clay, both. Um, Asa Hilliard also. Uh, I don't know if he's at the conference, but he certainly worked with with uh, with the folks Souzas. Finch, Finch. Dr. Fa Charles Finch out of. Um, Atlanta. Again, Clegg is L.A. Rodoko was in L.A. Now he's in Texas. This is Van Sertima. Ivan Van Sertima and mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Charles Colfer. So he dealt uh, deals with a lot of uh, uh, the Bible, the biblical text, and African. Uh, this, the focus on African people in the Bible. So, 
he was there. Okay, so uh, now what's come out of the Now Valley Conference is, is uh, different things, but I wanted to highlight Van Sertima. And when he passed in 2009, we had a major tribute in his honor at Asa Academy in West Oakland. It was standing room only. We had, and you know what, we had a lot of people, for the, because we had a lot of students and others, it was the very first time that they had ever heard of Van Sertima. So we had people from the community, but a lot of newcomers who heard about the influence of his work. Because what Van Sertima was able to do is to uh, take the momentum from the conference and, and uh, distribute that information very widely. Now, he had already, he had credibility before because of his book, They Came Before Columbus, which he published in 77. And by the way, 2012 and now 2013, this is his, uh, his wife, uh, Jacqueline Van Sertima. They're promoting They Came Before Columbus and it's a 35th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So it's the 35th anniversary edition that they've uh, put out, mm -hmm. that she's put out. As a matter of fact, we would have had her come to the Van Sertima tribute, but they were members of, um, I'm trying to, I'm blocking the name, but they were members of, uh, of the church in Harlem and they had an event the same day that we were honoring Van Sertima. Mm -hmm. But she sent me a lot of materials and uh, Brother um, Walter Turner and his colleague at KPFA had a major uh, program on Van Sertima. And so Jacqueline Van Sertima took, uh, she took a lot of the comments I made on the radio program and used that in the obituary. Mm -hmm. Because I was talking about the value, the true value and the historical impact of the Journal of African Civilizations. And so she told me she took that, took a lot of it word for word because it she thought it captured mm -hmm. accurately the influence that her husband was able to yield. So these are some of the issues of the journal. In fact, before I even show you those, uh, what are some of the issues of the journal of African civilization? Okay. I'll tell you, let's, let's, just take, let's take a couple minutes and see if you can jot down some titles. Just take a minute with your neighbor and see what you come up with. Okay. Some titles of the Journal of African Civilization. So now I know that they, they, uh, some of them came in book form. They came in book form, but they actual, actually were volumes in the journal. So I learned, for example, when I was at Morgan State, some librarians classified these works at, in, in the books section, others put them in the journal section. So anyway, what titles, um, so when, okay, let, let's see how, let's see what you know. Uh, <laughs> what was the first year of the Journal of African Civilizations? We just call it the JAC. Yeah, just, uh, we'll, we'll come back in a minute, but the Journal of African Civilizations, what year did it, did it start, what year did it end, and what are some of the titles? That's what I want to see, what you may come up with. So we'll come back together, we'll give you a couple minutes, so you can confer with a neighbor to your left, to your right, front of you, behind you. The year and the, the years of the publication and, and titles. Journal of African Civilizations. Where did Tracy? They didn't know. Tracy is our spokesperson. I don't know. I don't know. That information escapes me. Fifth and final. <laughs> you sound too uh, happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving a hard time because you cut last week. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> 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 What's the next question? Uh, okay. How yes, quickly is, um, I don't want to get off subject, but is he the one, remember I came to you and I said someone told me that yes. the, the name, the word Africa really comes from something nice. Ah. Uh, oh, that's silliness, yeah. Yeah, and, and then I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> in, in he, 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 published, he published it in one of the journals. Okay. It wasn't his writing, but he did publish it. Okay. So, so Van Sertin was the editor of the <coughs> Journal of African Civilization. So he published it, but it wasn't his uh, his commentary. But yeah, all of that stuff was okay. put out there, yeah. Okay. So, uh... You ready to end now? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> 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 she always runs a little bit.
sister. I'm a visionary. Just her nature. Okay. I'm an African sister. I'm a visionary. All right. <laughs> so what are some of the titles? And I see a lot of you looking on this side of the room. We're not, what about over here? So, okay. So we, we need, okay. So what are the years that it was published? The Journal of African Civilization, what years? What year, what year did it, the first issue appear? What was the last issue? Or the last uh, volume in the series? Okay, 1979 to 1994. So it was a 15-year period. And I say that the Journal of African Civilizations is the most important, single most important publication in the last quarter of the 20th century regarding African civilizations. The and most. Copies are still available? Yeah, they, they are still available. You, you can go to the website that uh, <coughs> Sister Jacqueline Van Sertema I don't know if it's called Legacy, but if you, if you just put in any of the titles which we'll go over in a minute, they'll mm -hmm. come up. Or just put in Jack, uh, Jacqueline Van Sertema or Ivan Van Sertema books, and you can get them directly from her as opposed to, let's say, Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's better to do it that way. So, um, okay, so the years, we know 1979 to 1994. Uh, those are the years. What about some of the titles? Uh, influential, and by the way, you know, I, in talking with Ben, well, I, I'll tell you that in one second. Some of my conversations with him about the research. Any titles? Okay, well, some of the first titles he dealt with uh, the African presence in, in the early America period, but some of the titles, here they are. All right, so 79 to 94, so he was the editor. Um, and these are not in any kind of chronological order, and this is not all the titles, these are just some of the ones that. I was able to show you, but so there's the African presence in early America, mm -hmm. early America revisited, golden age of the Moor, mm -hmm. great black leaders, ancient and modern. Um, there's also Nile Valley civilization. So here in this particular publication, this is the uh, this is some of the papers from the proceedings of the conference that was launched in September of '84 in in uh, Atlanta. So it's just entitled Nile Valley Civilizations, also Egypt Revisited, and he also edit, edited Black Women in Antiquity, Blacks in Science, Ancient and Modern, and this is the last one published. So if we look under Journal of African Civilizations, then we can find all of the titles. I don't, I don't know if they're listed all. I, I think uh, what Sister Van Sertema probably lists the ones that she has uh, copyrights to distribute. Oh. But you won't, you'd probably have to dig pretty deep to get all the titles because the early ones are not in print anymore. Mm -hmm. And oh. so th this is the last one, Egypt Child of Africa. I have three essays in here, and i tell you how um, I have uh, something here next to So my Rahotep and Nafret article. Uh, so here's, here's what happened. Van Sertema was speaking in D.C., one of my buddies from Baltimore went to the presentation and gave him one of my pamphlets. So I was going to, ironically enough, a ASCAC. This must have been 92 or somewhere. Not, not, this is in 93. Ironically enough, I was going to an ASCAC study group. I just moved back, wanted to see what was happening here on the West Coast. And then I, was, I had one foot out of the door. I heard the phone ring. So I kind of held up to see if I needed to get it or get to the meeting. And the sister said it was fair certain. <laughs> so, 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 hello, uh, this is Ivan Ben Sertima. May I speak to Mainu Ampim? Uh, uh, this is he, Doc. I had no idea. So he said he had got my article. He was talking about how he, he was telling me how impressed he was with it, and then he was very apologetic. He was apologetic that he could only pay me. I forgot the exact amount. I have to check my records, but he was very apologetic that he could only pay me like about seventy-five dollars or so. <laughs> What? I, mean, I would have paid to have my stuff in the Journal of African Civilization. So we, we, we were talking. So he wanted me to publish the work I, I had put together on what I called the counter school. Because it was a counter school like Basil Davis and Martin Bernal and, and, um, and, uh, and, Cecil, uh, and uh, Cecil Gray. Is that uh, Gray? Uh, I know his last name is Gray. But anyway, that they were looking and working to undermine the movement that we're speaking of. So that's what he wanted me to publish. But then I was telling him about my work on forgeries, so he 
asked me to publish several works, and this is the last one published in 1994. You go online, it might say 95. No, it was published in 94. Now, this man, very humble. Here you got it into, as a matter of fact, I didn't, you know what? I didn't even think about this. It never even occurred to me until he passed away in 2009. I was leading a tour on, on Kemet, and a brother gave me a call. By the fact, it was Brother Malik. He gave me a call at about 3 or 4 in the morning. I said, Brother, somebody from the States just called me and told me that Ben Sertima passed away. And I didn't really know what to think. And I said, Brother, I, I, uh, I appreciate you informing me so there's not a lot of speculation and allow me to formally announce that on the bus this morning. And he said, uh, he told me, ladies, said, Brother, the first thing you said was that we got to do something. That's what I was thinking. He said, you know, that's what you said. So we organized a major event in his honor. And, and, but I, I, I never thought about it until he passed. I said, you know what? Now that I think about it, Ben Sertima, as to show you how humble he was. He was an international scholar yes. calling yeah. an unknown student. Yeah. This is in 93. This is 20 years ago. And he, uh, that's how humble he was. If he mm -hmm. saw some work that he thought was useful, right. I need to contact the person. There's a lot of folks that would never do that today. They would never do it because of ego. They figure that if your work is making a contribution in areas that they've never discussed, then you're in competition. Mm -hmm. And that is not of the past. That's what happens right now. That's what I was getting yeah, to. It happens right now. It's, it's, it's insane how that happens. It, it happens right now. But I just wanted to finish the story really quickly. Yes, so yes, brother, but you didn't say what the topic of your article was. You just said he called you. But oh. this was the article on North Red. He, uh, he, he called me, the, the topic of the article is Egypt as a Black Civilization, the counter school. All right. Yeah, the counter school. Thank you. That they were, yes, you, you're welcome. And then I wrote the piece on, uh, on, on right. Rahotep and Nafred and then another piece on Peru and Makhid or the so-called Sphinx. So this is the last publication and we had a lot of discussions about the journal. A lot of discussions and Ben Sertima was stressed out that the community was not helping at all. He said if, if it wasn't for the white institutions, the, the publication would have been, had been gone under. And he also warned me against some hustlers in the Caribbean who were stealing money from distributors. In other words, you know, in the book industry, you don't have to pay up front. You pay, you got 30 days or 60 days to pay whatever it is. These hustlers would take the money, sell the, I mean, excuse me, take the books, sell the books, and not even pay the money. So he was stressed out towards the end of his, uh, his life. Yes. Can you pass your book? We say? <laughs> Can you pass around your book? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Okay. And so, okay, so anyway, uh, you know, I didn't ask, did, I, did I pass this around? This was in honor of, of the um, great African thinkers. But Van Sertema's contribution with the journal, it popularized African scholarship and writings like no other publication or person. His contribution is set in stone. Nobody else pulled together, as he did, a community of scholars to be able to tell the story. And he did this. This was being, at one point, the journal was being published twice a year. And it was crisscrossing the Western world, making a major impact. That's how a lot of people became known, because they published in a journal. Right. right. And um, so a lot of people owe a debt. And after Van Sertima was no longer able to publish the journal, guess what? They stopped. I had told one person, I said, you know what? You're in a very good position to pull people together to at least publish another issue. Mm -hmm. It's like ASCAP. That's the perfect No goal. scholarship after the scholars kind of left the organization. No scholarship. I agree. Matter of fact, I could have said this. With um, a Reconstructing Committee Culture, the conference they had in, in, in Aswan, I would say this, and I've said this many, many times, I don't really think you can improve on their plans. I don't think you can really improve very much, maybe a little bit, but the only issue is that they're just that, plans. But you can't really improve on, on the theoretical frameworks that are done very well, but no implementation. So that's kind of where we are and where we've been, but his contributions are very major. And the Journal of African Civilization, mm -hmm. I, I argue this is the most influential publication, right. series of publications in the, in the last quarter of the 20th century. He pulled together a community of scholars. Very, very humble too. Very, very humble to approach me to present in that manner. Um,
and the Nile Valley. So I just showed you one example of someone who was in the Nile Valley Conference, and the Nile Valley Conference number two took place just over a year ago, mm -hmm. year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So Nile Valley Conference two was in Atlanta, and um, this theme was Nile Valley Conference from the Nile to the Niger to the Mississippi. That's what the theme was. So after 27 years, from 1984 to 2011, after a quarter century, this conference took place. And it was, uh, was co-convened by different people. Uh, some of the main organizers was uh, my colleague, Dr. Charles Finch, also Sister Roby Hilliard, one of Dr. Hilliard's daughters, and there were some others, but those are two of the people that you know of. So I was asked to give the, the, uh, the first keynote. So, so uh, this major international conference, I was the first keynote presenter. This is what I presented on. Origin and purpose of Nile Valley Pyramid Science. This is exactly what I uh, presented. So I opened up the uh, entire conference. And I, I, uh, I had no idea that Sister uh, Nefertari Hilliard, or Patricia, when they were in San Francisco, I didn't know she was at South San Francisco High when I was at Ceremony. I mean, we, we knew each other from Morgan State when I was there, and she was at Howard, but I didn't know we, we didn't know we had a connection here. We were pretty much the same graduating year and everything else. So uh, she said she was a cheerleader. I said, what are you? <laughs> how can you not notice me? I'm on the court. I got all of these trophies, and how, how can you not see me on the court? <laughs> on the court? So we, we, we went through that. But anyway, that's, that's what I presented at the conference, and uh, this is uh, some of the work. I've, I've been doing a lot of work at pyramid sites up and down the Nile Valley, so uh, when they invited me to present, I was glad to be able to do that yeah. and open up the conference. A lot of people were there. It was a five-day uh, conference, but this was the Nile Valley Conference number two. And so anyway, time is moving, so let me... So, Chancellor Williams, this is one of the greatest issues dealing with these African civilizations from the Sudan and, and Egypt that go fo so far back into antiquity that it's beyond the reach of man. So he's indicating that this is, is crucial that we look at these, these areas. So those individuals and these organizations, and some that are not in the or main organizations that I mentioned have made contributions, but those are the two main branches, the ASCAC branch and the Nile Valley uh, Civilization or Conference branch that really impacted us throughout the country and also the Western world. So these are really the questions here. These are the questions. So, so what? We were great in the old days. What does that mean? Who cares? <laughs> right. It doesn't mean anything. But for some, that's all they want to do is be able to say, you know what, I'm African, and then then they go off in the glory, and that's it. But that don't mean nothing. So what are you going to do now? And very few really have addressed that question, as Chancellor Williams did. Implementation. Yeah, and that's why Chancellor and Williams is isolated. Yes, yeah, so, so the implementation is thin, to say the least. So these are the questions. Where are we uh, now, and, w and where do we go from here? So what thoughts do you all have on... Uh, <laughs> there's a big question at the end, I know, but, <laughs> but still, uh, it's <laughs> it what's the role of the historian? Yeah. In this? Well, I think we're, I think we're scattered and, um, and, and, and unorganized. Mm -hmm. So many different levels. Um, uh, the work of Dr. Ben Serma, I, I see it as a, as a perfect example. Um, this tremendous vehicle to get this new information out to an established audience and for no one to pick that work up. And ASCAD being <laughs> the conference for classes got African studies for around for years, somehow or another not being able to come together enough to continue Dr. Van Sertema's work, uh, work I, I see it as, as a real tragedy. Mm -hmm. Criminal. So, and, I mean, that's on that level. And then, you know, um, even in, within the general society, we're pretty, uh, we're pretty unorganized right now. We're organized in pockets, but uh, we don't really have a, a, a good, strong group organization that we need to really help facilitate encourage and support scholars to continue to do this work, to give them vehicles for presentation. That comes from the people. Mm -hmm. And so that's an area where we're also uh, faltering. So, so what you're saying Very is we can point. organize like that's what you do. Where do we go from here is get organized. Yeah, exactly. 
exactly. Uh, and, uh, and on different levels, and they kind of feed into each other. We can organize within our communities and begin to uh, create vehicles for these scholars to present and disseminate that work. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I still come back to, uh, to ASCAP, maybe, even if it's just a matter of going with one branch of ASCAP. They have the structure for this. It's perfectly for their lap. We shouldn't have to always be recreating stuff. Uh, well, let me just say that uh, ASCAC is not structured to do that, unfortunately. Uh, any time an organization continues to do the same thing year after year for a quarter century, that's what it's designed to do. So um, there is no plan or program in the organization. So we just praise ASCAC for what it has contributed. And let's, and let's be honest and, and move on. But, but that's, uh, that's about all we can really say. Uh, but there's work that's being done here at this institution as well. Let's not yeah. forget. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is there is there is there a space for revival? Even if the even if the organization has been somewhat stagnant in some ways for a significant amount of time, um, you know, fine. There might not be anything built into the mechanism now, but who's to say that you know people can't come and, and add new life and new energy to something. But we see that in many organizations, including our own. Not stagnancy necessarily, but just more so like, okay, well, there's evolution that takes place. Well, uh, we can't be, I hear you, I appreciate your point, but we can't, we also at the same time can't be nostalgic about trying to do the impossible. Uh, we have to do what's doable. You can go into an institution and try to make it something that it's not, but good luck. <laughs> um, just talk to the people who've, all, who, who've already been beat down and beat up. Just go to those circles. <laughs> so, so you have to trust that I know. I'm speaking from the inside. I'm telling you yes. things from the inside. I can tell you a whole lot more. But if you read my book, I don't mention names, but I mention the, what the actions are. But when you see that, matter of fact, let me just say this. Uh, everybody's not a scholar, so let, let, me, let me say that again. And then not everybody needs to be in front of the people. What happened in this, when this became so exciting to the community, what happened was the mess developed. There was a mess. There was money, ego nurturing, and sex. The mess, M-E-S. So if you don't know about the mess, then, then all you're going to do is just get, you're, you're get destroyed by the process by not knowing. So the mess is what ruled, it reigned. And a lot of people that uh, have earned respect was much a part of this. So I'm just saying to you is that we have to move on. As long as we try to stay stuck in the past, nothing's going to get done. If, and if you think that you have a better idea, then go in those circles and work as diligently as you can and then talk to me in six months and find out. <laughs> so I'm telling you that we can create new and beneficial activity. So I simply was indicating that the contribution that these organizations and people have made, they're valuable. But that's the past. This is a new day. And the reason why with all this activity around the Western world, we still have are doing worse should tell you something. Mm -hmm. There's been no contributions in terms of solving problems. So, you know, so we can put focus on other organizations and focus right here in this community. And I want to tell you what I'm doing. Yes, Brother Davis. I, I you just made about to make the point. We can get very philosophical and very abstract and uh, talk about other organizations. Why we have one here? Exactly. It is what we do uh, that <laughs> becomes the history, and we're we are making history. Well, it has gone through many of the phases that you just described. Mm -hmm. We used to have a speaker series, and, and many of the people on the screen here have been here. Yes. yes. And uh, in you know, close contact with us, yes. and have returned over and over again. But if you listen to some of us, in terms of our knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, you might miss that. Mm -hmm. you, you might miss that. Uh, that we've been doing the work, and we're still engaged in the work. We're still engaged in creating tomorrow, the tomorrow we want to see. And I would like to see us spend maybe just a few minutes talking about what that work is and what our vision of it yeah. is for the near future. Not, here, not here right here, <laughs> right around this table <laughs> in our worship service, uh, in our community dialogues, in our community meetings, all of that stuff is 
We are the people. That's right. We have scholars here. We have people who may not be interested in scholarship, mm -hmm. so they're here for other reasons. And that's us. Right. We are the range. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what we do with it. That's right. Well, and know that, sorry. Go ahead. I have to say, because I, I, can, I I'm, can imagine that there's some like, hey, well, wait a minute, why are you so romanticizing of ASCAC? My point is, overall, that there are institutions that were started that may be problematic, but we have to sometimes focus on the commonalities versus always being like, well, you know, I'm just saying I, my only fear is, and I'm not saying that this is what's happening in our conversation, I'm saying my concern is we're very quick to throw the baby out with the bathwater. So maybe there were some challenges with some things and there were some issues and somebody had a problem with something. But we're all African people. If we all have at least can focus on certain commonalities, then, you know, we have to come together around those things. We talk about being disorganized and part of the disorganization is focusing too much on differences and just saying, well, no more. So my, my overall point is where can we come together? And obviously we're here, we're working in this institution and we're doing what we can to um, you know, help continue the work that's already been started. But my point is we can't just turn our backs on everything that's been done. Let, let, let me say this, let, let me respond in it. Okay, Sunday morning, 11 a.m., we know it's the most segregated hour in the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so WOSE was established because it's a different vision, different values, different goals. So if everybody's going to come together, you wouldn't have a church on the corner here, church right around the corner over there. So we don't have to be in conflict with them. We're not going to change what they're doing. Nope. But you always have a healthy distance. Healthy distance create healthy relationships. It's not about changing someone and trying to get them to do what they clearly have indicated they're not going to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So whatever ASCAC or any other organization is doing, fine. But they're not going to do anything other than what they've done, you know, for the past quarter century mm -hmm. or so. Or actually, well, in that, in their, yeah, about the last 20 years it's been doing what it's doing. So uh, that's my point. So have the healthy relationship, but they're, they're not going to be changed. Just like people are not going to come in and we'll say and just change and, and make we'll say something that they want it to want it to be if it's not consistent with what people here want so there's no issue so what if somebody has a different group it's a huge country so we should be working we should be working in different areas and uh, and that's what we need to know but what these people have contributed we honor that and we move on yes Our personal development is unlimited, yeah. and that goes in every uh, category of, of, of our own right. personal existence. And what I what I think is that you know there there's there's a, a curriculum for higher consciousness. I think one of the reasons why I was attracted to the book professor is that. Um, going beyond the lecture model, and I can remember going to some of these conferences back in the 80s and 90s, and just um, itching at my seat because I was saying, okay, well, great. You know, we have had all of these um, monumental contributions and the, the resurrection of information and knowledge. Well, then how do we begin to apply it to self-mastery? And so it, it really, I only see that there is really one problem. And, and that one problem for me is, is the restoration of that ancient uh, mystery, you know, system within me and to master that. So when I come together and hold relationship, you know, hold hands with human relationship, then I'm going to be able to measure the relationship of myself engaged with you and to see if there's going to be growth. And so I, I see that for me and my own personal development, there needs to be a step-by-step -step healing strategy. If there's any breach or imbalance within me, it's really about me getting to work on that. So when I come together with you in relationship, then 
I, you know, I can begin to see the multiplications of the fruits of what right relationships mean. Mm -hmm. And every uh, component of what I think, say, and do and touch in, in every category. So again, I'll say that the um, power of development is unlimited. And it's just about me getting to work on that every single day. Right. Um, given all the factors that you've outlined this morning, and um, also the, the antipathy and, and the apathy that um, the, the general African public that we're trying to target and lift up, that, that they have towards this information and knowledge, we, I think we still have to resolve within ourselves that we, it has to be done and we have to be diligent and resolve in ourselves to work even though it may not meet with uh, immediate success, but we have to work for the future and um, be as diligent as we can and if we find groups or organizations that are agreeable and willing to work, we work with those and go, go forward and do the best that we can in the um, in the time and the group that we have to be the best. Makes sense. Yeah. I think where we are we now is the, the, the village is on fire. And so that if we have people coming in uh, hurt and damaged and confused, we got to have a very clear message. And I don't think it needs to be complicated or overly done. Like, I think there's different factions uh, factions in different parts of the, of the World State Movement that a person walking in the street could fit into. And I think that the opportunity cost of having a person take on the, um, a task that they feel good that they could accomplish is very, it is really, really important for us to reach that benefit of that as quickly as possible uh, so people see real gains. So, yeah, and then where do we go from here is this constant improvement. If something's slacking, let each other know and we can have it. Sounds good. Um, so most of you know what I'm doing with it, making it practical, field work on a regular basis. Our Save Nubia um, project, as you all are aware of, um, our action plans. So to me, it's about making, making the information actionable. So I have uh, my work here, and this is what we're doing. So there's other efforts, and uh, we, we collaborate. We work together mm -hmm. to make things happen. But this is my response. And <coughs> if I had more time, I would tell you <laughs> the differences when other people are just more interested in information. I say this information alone doesn't transform behavior, it never has and it never will. So um, we work with people who want to be actionable. So anyway, thank you folks uh, for thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, please please fill out uh, complete the evaluation form so we can submit them to uh, what's menu. I read French but I don't speak it. Anyway, we want to turn those in, and please remember that uh, immediately next week our new class begins, which is uh, creation with describe. Oh, uh, the course on creations, uh, the different uh, creation narratives we'll be studying in in, uh, in Kemet. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, Brother uh, Raymond Davis will be um, taking us through those, so please uh, be in attendance, for give, uh, counting on your full support and interest uh, starting yeah. next week. Continuing the work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, creation, creation there it is. Next Sunday, we're not gonna. We usually have a, uh, a, a week off, but we're we'll going right into it. Next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, same time. Okay, okay job. Yeah. 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 yeah, I, I need your, your your response. Okay. Thank you, brother. Terrible. I gave you a test.
Yeah.